Welcome back to the Early Parenting Podcast. Today is the final part of my three-part series on separation anxiety. In today's episode, I have dedicated the episode to giving you some practical strategies you can use to help support your baby or toddler through periods of separation anxiety. Welcome to the Early Parenting Podcast, where we help you navigate the somewhat tricky world of parenthood so you can love the crap out of being a mama. I'm your host, Jen Butler, and I'm an early parenting consultant and a mama of two busy, busy boys. Join me as I explore all things early parenting and deliver them to you in toddler-friendly, bite-sized lessons. Because let's be honest, your toddler is probably smothering pseudo cream on the wall as we speak. I'll be dropping my hottest tips on baby and toddler sleep, feeding, boobs, behavior, and so much more. Are you ready to feel confident in motherhood? Let's dive in. This episode is brought to you by my free guide, Eight Ways to Help Your Baby or Toddler Sleep Well at Night. If you want your baby or toddler to start sleeping for longer naps than 30 minutes or to actually sleep for a longer chunk than two hours overnight, then you need to know all the ways to improve their sleep because there's actually a fair few things you need to know. So if you want to get my free guide, Eight Ways to Help Your Baby or Toddler Sleep Well at Night, then head to jenbutler.mykajabi, which is K-A-J-A-B-I dot com forward slash sleep dash well. Okay, on to the episode. So the first strategy I want to discuss is planning goodbyes in advance. So if you know your baby or toddler cries when you leave, it's better to let them know that separation is happening before it actually happens, so you offer them a safe and supported place to let out their emotions. The older your babe, the more likely you'll be able to communicate their upset with you. So other times, this just helps them to know what's coming next, so there's no nasty surprises when they're suddenly dropped off. So the conversation could go something like, now, mummy or daddy is going to work soon. I'll be dropping you off at daycare. Will you play with the kids until we pick you up later on? So preempting upset and helping validate your baby or toddler's feelings will help them to learn to process the feelings they have at separation. And it can also mean that when that separation actually happens, the emotions are less severe. So number two, connect. So I mentioned in the last episode that some of the triggers for separation anxiety are lack of connectedness to you. If you're noticing the symptoms of separation anxiety in your baby or toddler, now is the time to work on some quality one-on-one time, now more than ever. So life is busy for everyone, and sometimes it feels too overwhelming to have to add in another thing to your schedule. But taking the time to lock in some quality time with your baby and toddler can actually save you a lot of time in the long run when they're better able to cope with separation from you. So number three, encourage laughter. Sometimes the best way to help lighten separation and heal your baby or toddler's fears around being away from you is through laughter. So ironically, at the time of planning this episode, my three-year-old Ted was going through a stage of separation anxiety. So the other day, my husband went to leave for work, which triggered Ted to scream and cry at his departure. At first, I used my comfort and validation of his feelings to try and support him, but he needed more. So in the end, I actually joked and said, hey, Teddy, should we run out and chase after dad in the ute? Do you think we'll be faster than him? And so we started running after the ute. So I'm just going to let that image of some crazy mom with a toddler in her arm like running after this ute sink into your head a little. <laughs> but it worked a treat. So laughter really can be the best medicine. And it helped to let out the emotion and tension he was feeling. And it also helps to distract them a little bit from, you know, why they're upset to begin with. So it's sort of a mixture of how it can be effective. So number four, avoid sneaking away. This is a big no-no and will only damage and perpetuate the problem even more. If your baby or toddler can't trust what's going to happen in unfamiliar places and circumstances, they're not going to let you out of their sight. This is something I see a lot in the world of sleep. 
parents wait for their baby or toddler to be fast asleep before they carefully lower them into the cot and tiptoe out. Now, this will work fine until your baby goes through a sleep cycle. Then they wake and then they realize you aren't there and they freak out because when they fell asleep, you were there. Honesty at bedtime is just as important as honesty when you're leaving them for work or other reasons. Number five, use an attachment object. This involves giving your baby or toddler an object that connects the time from you being away to the time you return. You may choose to give them an object of yours like a keychain or something they see you with often and something that you don't need throughout the day, of course. So you can say things like, can you look after mummy's bracelet while I'm at work? And when I come back to pick it up, you can put it back on me. Something like that where they can have and hold it and keep them secure, knowing that you're going to come back for the object and for them can really help. Number six, validate their emotions. So if you've been following me a while, you'll know there is nothing more I love than validating and naming emotions. My proudest parenting moments stem to when my boys say to me, Mommy, I feel so frustrated right now. I'm such a geek. (laughs) But the reality is you will need to be separated from your babe from time to time. And if your child struggles with the separation, it's not your job to cancel plans and do whatever you need to make them happy. But what you do need to do is name and validate the way they feel. If they're crying at the door as you leave daycare, pick them up and say, I know you're feeling worried and sad about me leaving. It's hard to say goodbye. Mummy and daddy will be back soon and I can't wait to give you that big hug when I get back. Yes, you still might need to leave a crying baby or toddler and yes, it bloody sucks. But just remember, just by naming and validating the way your child feels means you are building a strong and resilient child. And this is so important. Number seven, create security by keeping things familiar. Babies and toddlers love to know what's happening next, which is no different to most of us as adults. When we aren't sure what's around the corner, we feel uneasy. So to create the feeling of security for your baby or toddler, make things consistent and familiar. One of the things I do for families I work one-on-one with is create familiarity around sleep time. This is one of the most important parts of the sleep puzzle and lack of security at bedtime I find is a very common trigger for bedtime battles. Now a final note on separation anxiety. Separation anxiety isn't something that is experienced by babies or toddlers at all times and it shouldn't be something that you have to deal with on a day-to-day, month-to-month basis. If you feel your baby and toddler is anxious all the time, then it's worthwhile reaching out to someone who can support you and your baby to help improve the anxiety experienced by them. Speak with your GP if you're worried that your baby or toddler or older child is always anxious as closer support may be needed to help them. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this three-part series diving into the complex world of separation anxiety. I'll join you here in next week's episode where I am interviewing the beautiful Mel Finlay and we're going to be talking about the influence of nutrition on hormones and this interview is going to be a cracker. So I look forward to joining you here next week. Bye for now. Thanks for listening to the episode, Mama. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to share the episode with a friend, with your mother's group, or tag me at Jen Butler Early Parenting on Instagram. The more that know about this podcast, the more people I can help. If you're looking for support that is personalized for your babe and tailored to your family's needs, then make sure to head on over to my website, www.jenniferbutler.com dot com dot au and check out how we can work together so you can move through motherhood with confidence catch you in the next episode mama